Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Just the thought of court can scare anybody. So in this episode today, we're talking about do you actually need to go to court for divorce, property settlement or children's matters? Welcome, Mum. Hello, Laura. Hi, everyone. So let's settle this once and for all, and we're going to do it in three steps. We're going to talk about property, then we're going to talk about kids' matters, and then we're going to talk about the actual paperwork of officially becoming divorce, divorce. Mm -hmm. And if you're de facto, you don't have to worry about that, I think. That's right. That's right. Great. All right. So yeah, and court, court looks scary. I've seen it on TV. (laughs) I've actually been in one a few times, and it is scary as. So I can see why a lot of people are like, oh, I want to avoid court at all costs. Yes. And another reason why they want to avoid court at all costs is because of the dollars. Yes. Seems expensive. So do you get a lot of people come to you in your in your practice going, I want to get this settled and I want to avoid court? Yeah, of course. Yeah. No one loves to go to court. Really? Unless they're weird. I'm sure there's some manipulative controlling people out there that not, love it. Not my clients. No, not your clients. <laughs> not our listeners. No, not so, our listeners. So some people... Or most people are like, let's do this, let's avoid court, which is different to, and I'm putting this disclaimer in, let's not use lawyers. That's different. That's completely different. Yes. So the assumption that if you see a lawyer means you're going to go to court is not true. And if your ex is saying, I don't want this to go to court, I don't want to spend lots of money in court, so let's not see a lawyer, that argument is null and void. Let's keep lawyers out of this is a red flag any day of the week. Okay. And it usually tells me they they have seen a lawyer. They didn't want the didn't like the outcome or the answer. Yep. So they don't want you finding out what you're entitled to. Okay. Mm. So that's the disclaimer right there at the yes. beginning. Right. So when it comes to property settlement, mum, can you get your property settlement done and dusted without going into court? Yes. Going in, to going court. in, going into court, walking the, in. Yes, is is the 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 rub there is. So yes, you can. There's there's two ways that you can do property settlement. One is with the financial agreement. Mm-hmm. It's under the Family Law Act, so it's uh, has to follow the guidelines in the Family Law Act to make the agreement actually hold to make it. Uh, well, we, like I'd like to think bulletproof, but anyway. It used to be called a binding financial it agreement, did, but it no longer is binding. They, it's well, just they, a financial they agreement. They took financial agreement. They took the binding off it, but they didn't change the law much. Right. But it just tells you that, you know, they're not 100% False guaranteed. False advertising, yeah. fake news. If they didn't want people thinking that it would never be overturned, but a financial agreement can be overturned sometimes. Okay. And then, so that's one way of doing it where it says, we don't want the court involved. These are the, this is the agreement. These are the things we agree on and we'll sign our FA on the bottom (laughs) of the pages. Maybe they should have left the B in. Yeah, FA doesn't sound good. (laughs) Um, And, and then that's it. And you use that document to not have to pay stamp duty if you're transferring property. The court, the state titles officers and state stamp duty officers recognise that agreement. Mm -hmm. Banks recognise that agreement as ending your financial relationship. And the second way, and probably more common way, and usually cheaper way, is by consent orders. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, you can tell by the word orders that a judge has to make those orders or a registrar in the court. But the difference is with consent orders is that, yes, it goes into court, but you don't have to. So usually you fill in an application for the court to make consent orders. The application will have enough information about each of you. You both have to sign it. For to enable a registrar to look at the orders, look at what you've got, and decide whether those orders are just and equitable in accordance with the Act. And if they think they are reasonable orders, then the registrar will put the court seal on, sign them, send them back to you. And so that would be like he gets this much, I get this much, yep. you get this car, I get this car, the house is going to get sold. This and we're kind going of to divide it this way. Yes. So so you you're actually applying to the court for orders, but you're also saying, and by the way, these are the orders we agree on. Right. And you're just getting the court to say, yep, yeah, that seems reasonable, stamp, stamp. So technically, technically, you don't have to go to court mm. for that. 
but your paperwork goes yeah, to court. Yeah, you email the court. Yeah, you go court. Well, you don't email, yeah. it goes on the Com Courts oh, portal. the portal, yes. Yeah. So you upload it onto the portal and it technically goes to court there and then comes back. So so that's two ways you can settle your property without technically going to court. Mm. Is there a third way? No. No, it's just you go to court. That's, that's right. You can, the third way is you go to court. Yeah, well, well there's Physically. That. Yeah, where you apply for court, apply and, and you don't, aren't lucky enough to be able to say, and by the way, these are the orders we want. You're going, please make some orders and, oh, my God, I don't know what we're going to agree on. And then right. your ex puts something in and and you really are going to court then. Is is mediation part of court? Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? Sometimes it is. Yeah. So, so uh, But you have to do mediation or attempt it before you can file to go to court. So, so there's two different types of mediation. There's before court mediation yes. that's not involved in the court at all, not yep. done by court people, and uh, then there's yes. court, court, and there's, there's court, court mediation. Court, court mediation. And once you're in court, if the, if the court thinks you haven't tried mediation hard enough or there was something that they think you can mediate again, mm. they will either order you back to a private mediator mm. or they will use one of the mediators that works at the court, the registrars that work at the court. So there's court, there's mediation to start with in, in an effort to avoid court and yes. then when you do go into the court and you're presented with an argument uh, between you both, the registrar will generally send you back to mediation to try and sort this problem out before it becomes a trial. Now, Mum, yes, I'm going to point out that you've um, left yourself out there because I've done our DIY divorce blueprint and I know in our module Avoiding the Court roller coaster, another option is, is arbitration. Arbit- oh, my goodness, I forgot about so that. So there is another way to get your property right. settled without going to court. Mm-hmm. Can you explain, because you are a qualified arbitrator. I am a qualified arbitrator. I am. <laughs> and you forgot about that, that is an option. Yes. So I know okay. it's been a long day. So can you explain to everybody what arbitration is? Okay, so arbitration, first of all, it can only be done by consent. Right, and so it's that only means you have to, to agree. Property. Both consent means you both have to agree to arbitration, okay? okay? Yep. So let's say, I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> so uh, I need a cup of tea and I chocolate. Think so. I think uh, so. Stat. <laughs> <laughs> so before you go to court, you've tried mediation, you can't work it out, you think, what are we going to do? I don't want to go through that whole court process, all that money to get a judge to tell me what the answer is. Oh, I've got a good idea. Why don't we agree that we'll give these facts, all our documents, um, give our facts to an arbitrator? Uh, we might even make some oral submissions or write in your submissions of why you think your case and why they think their case. The arbitrator will arbitrate. A bit like the trade unions have arbitrators, the arbitrator will decide on what's the right outcome. So they're like a pretend judge. They kind of are. They have some judicial protections. Usually, I mean, we have a few in Australia who are retired judges, Mm -hmm. so you're really getting good quality. You'll have people like me who are accredited specialists, been doing this for absolutely ever, (laughs) Um, and we can look at it and go, you know what, this is how it's going to go. And we write an award, uh, which is like a judgment, only not. It's an award. You put your your reasons, your excuses. Your excuses. You put your reasons (laughs) why you say this is the answer and then put the answer, and you send that document to the parties with with the outcome. And is that a court document? Not yet. Okay. But you write it up like a court order. Yeah. Then the parties register that at the court. Right. Okay. And then uh, it becomes an order of the court once Mm. it's registered. A registrar will have a look at it and go, yep, that's right. Now, if someone objects to it being registered in the court, then you are in court and and the arbitration is sort of wasted, I guess. Okay. Uh, Generally, um, it's a really good way of, of just ending a fight over something. Is it expensive? Uh, it can be. Uh, it's more expensive than court? No. Okay. It's usually not more expensive. It could be uh, about the cost of a mediation perhaps. Right. Um, and it depends what different people charge and how many hours they're going to spend on it and what's at stake. I think it's only available for property pools under 500000 Right. I should check that. But, yes, yeah, something like that, the smaller property pools anyway. Okay. Uh, so they're not big, massive ones. So if one of our listeners wants to avoid court at all costs, they've tried mediation, they've tried negotiating it themselves, 
they're worried the next step is going to be caught. They could ask their ex, hey, did you want to try arbitration? Yes. Where do you find an arbitrator? I just Googled them. They're all, there's a list of arbitrators uh, in the Australian Institute of uh, Family Law Mediators and Arbitrators. Uh, or you could just Google it. You'll see them, the ones okay. who've got the qualifications. And, and it's a bit like when you choose a mediator. So you might say, I'd like to go to arbitration. Maybe you write a letter to them and say, it's not just, I want to go to arbitration, what do you think? I want to go to arbitration, what do you think? And here are three arbitrators I've found, here's their contact details, and here's what their cost is like, and here's what their, how quickly they can give us a response. And so that's what you choose, how you choose. It. So you can, you know, do the negotiating yourself. How many people stay out of court? How many people can successfully do the negotiating and the consent orders themselves? Or I guess I don't know why I'm asking you that question because you're not going to know, but percentage of your clients in your history of having Mm. clients, what percentage ends up with consent orders and what percentage ends up in arbitration? Hardly any in arbitration at the moment because Mm. it's not compulsory. Right. So the courts are thinking about how they can promote arbitration. Um, and uh, they are. I'm. I'm seeing some of the registrars saying when you get into court, and they go. So the mediation didn't work. Have the parties considered arbitration? They're kind of promoting it, but they can't force it. Can I give the family court a tip? Give them a tip. Give it a different name. Come on, guys. Package it better. <laughs> arbitration sounds terrible. <laughs> well, sounds like some sort of torture. Well, they still have that document for going to court. It's is under I for initiating application. Uh, So good luck with changing the name. Okay. The the arbitrators are provided for in the Family Law Act and have been since probably the late 90s, Mm. Uh, but it just didn't take off. I guess if you're self-representing and you've got anxiety about standing up in court, I mean, it would be a good idea to, you know, to avoid doing it. If you file the award in court and the other person disputes it, what happens is a judge has a look at it and goes, yeah, I think that's fair enough and, and can seal it. Or they can go, oh, I see that's not actually correct. You better not, we better, you know, redo it or replace right. this. So you kind of uh, still have a bit of an out mm. at some stage, but it can truncate the process. Can I just, or I uh, just want to mention one thing, Rose. When you were doing mediation at school, mm. uh, you know how wonderful it was and the, mm. how transformative it can be when it's done properly. I was a mediator since 1994. But honestly, we had hardly any mediations. It was really a, a oh, wow, that's a novel thing. Got to go oh, to mediation. Oh, it's like a hippie new yes. age thing. And okay. there were a few barristers that could do it. And the Law Society, we had the, was L Law Society Arbitrators and Mediators. Was it a board or something, LAMB, or maybe it was just LAM. But we never got any work. The two barristers that were doing it really up in our town, up in Queensland at least, they got nearly all the work. Right. And uh, they used to apparently joke about the LAM, the Law Society Mediators and Arbitrators. They called it the silence of the lambs. And we could (laughs) not get work. I mean, Uh, I I would do a mediation every three weeks. Yeah. uh, yeah. And and I know a couple of others who were doing, they were using my offices, but not many of us. And now... It's compulsory. Mm. Uh, you don't just go once. You might get sent off two or three times to mediation. So, so you think arbitration might I think hit. arbitration will take off. Yeah. Uh, there's there's kind of a reluctance to hand over your outcome to some person you don't know. But what do you think you're doing in court? That's exactly what you're it's doing exactly in court. exactly what you're doing in court. But the difference is you don't have to stand there and, <laughs> and, and while they read it and be embarrassed about maybe, I don't know, some silly yeah. thing you said in a text message. Well, I think that the... Only time an arbitration is not probably a pro- well, I shouldn't say that so broadly, but in my mind, arbitration is suitable for most property matters unless there is a big argument about a fact. Right. If you have to put someone in the witness box and challenge them, to, the, you know, to prove something Sounds is or fact. isn't true. But if you agree on the facts, then, you can, like I said, you can't use chat GPT to give you the outcome. Mm. But that if you agree on the facts, then your arbitrator should prob- should come up with uh, a- an answer that is the same as a, a judge and remembering right. every judge. 
you could go, like you could ask three judges the mm. same questions and they'd all be slightly different mm. within a range, yeah. you know, 10, 15 percent. And your arbitrator's in there as well. So right. it seems smart. Mm. It does seem do like it. a good idea. I guess if you want to shut down the argument, like you've just said, if you've got the facts mm. at mediation, if all the facts are there, then then there's nothing to argue about. You just got to go, okay, well, this is reality. If you've got the evidence, you've got the facts, that's when you can avoid court. Because really, court is because he said that and she said that, but someone's not telling the truth and there's nothing to prove it otherwise. So a judge has got to watch you in a witness box to see who's telling the truth and That's lying. Right. And, yeah? and, the, and the barristers will cross-examine you, mm. challenge you with things. So sometimes with an arbitration, there's one kind of sticky point, mm. like, oh, how are they going to treat that money that I got for long service? And right. we both agree. Uh, you might reach consent on everything else. So when you put your proposal to the arbitrator, and this happened in my case, if this, then these are the orders we agree on. If that, then these are the orders we agree on. Right. So I only had to to resolve one small issue right. in accordance with the, the law and then the other orders fell into place. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yes, you can technically avoid court for hmm. property settlement, but your documents can't. That's right. Or you can just say, like, and this oh, is the you can for financial. If you do a financial agreement, your documents never go to court. This is true, but if you, you don't do it. anything and you just want to not do anything to avoid court, that's not a good idea because you could end up in court later on down the track. Mm-hmm. Right. So then let's go to kids. So okay. custody issues, parenting plans, parenting orders. What are, what are the ways that people can avoid court? Well. They can do consent orders yes. in the court like you can with property and, and sometimes you can put it in the same document. Can I just say that we've got an episode called Consent Orders, It's Not Rocket Science? Oh, yes. So I'll put that in the show notes and you can listen. And, of course, again, you can learn how to do consent orders yourself in our DIY Divorce Blueprint. But keep going, Mum. So, yes. Okay. So that, consent orders. And the other way is by a parenting plan. Right. Which never goes to court unless someone wants to apply for different orders and then you put the parenting plan in and say, well, Your Honour, we were doing this and we mm. both signed it and the court then has to consider why those parenting plan order, the parenting plan you made should be changed. Or right. Not. So a parenting plan is really you guys just snutting it out yourselves and then just saying, all right, this is what we're going to do. Yep. You sign it. You don't put it in the court. You don't send the document off to court. You don't even have to do a parenting plan in mediation. You can just do it yourselves, yes. right? A lot of people, Sparex notebook or yep. email exchange and uh, in me- or in mediation with a social worker and they just write down, okay, so I, I, we agree that the father will collect the kids at this time. We agree that both kids are going to get speech therapy. We agree, you know, that sort of thing. And you sign it and date it. Anything that's written down, signed and dated can be a parenting plan. It doesn't have to be in court orders, okay. fancy wording or anything. Okay, so that's a parenting plan. Then you could what take that next step and put it into consent orders. Yes, so you have to draft the orders mm-hmm. in a way that the court Recognizes and, right, and and then so you, you can't just send in like a scroll. No, do no? you know why the main thing? And I was bringing taking me to that next stage is that the difference between consent orders and a parenting plan is that a consent order is enforceable. Right, you can bring a contravention, a contravention application against the person who breaches the court order. Now, imagine if you had written down, "Dad's going to have the children from this time. I'm going to do the both kids get therapy." How would you enforce things like that? I mean, who's supposed to make dad give the thing? When's that supposed to happen? Mm. Who's going to make them do therapy? So those same orders in a consent order are written different. Are written different. They're written with a person. So the the mother, the father has time with the children from such and such to such and such, and the mother will do all acts and things to facilitate that, something like that. And then if he doesn't have time with them. If it's because of the mother, then that can be, you know, she's supposed to facilitate time. And then the second one is for, say, speech therapy for the kids. They would name each child and they would put who's going to do it, when they're going to do it, and usually what's going to happen if they don't do it. Right. And so that they're they're drafted in that legal language so that it can be enforced. And so who's parenting. going to pay all that sort of stuff Absolutely. is in there so it's enforceable. Okay, so that's the difference mm. between the two. And the consent orders, as we said, for property, you just send it into court. 
Yes, and both and and consent orders and financial agreements are both enforceable. Right. If the, if the financial agreement is done properly, yeah, uh, the wording is very clear and it is enforceable over who has to do this and who has to do what. Whereas a parenting plan is just basically evidence of what's happening if you needed to use it in court. Yes, that's right. right. Okay, so are they the only two ways to avoid court? Parenting plan, consent orders? You can't do arbitration. You can't do arbitration? About the children, <laughs> okay. no, it's never a good idea. Okay. It's just not provided for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, you can just let it never go to court and never do a parenting plan. Right. And heaps of people, you know, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. Mm. So heaps of people are getting the hang of this co-parenting thing now. Mm. The children at school, they are not the only ones going from house to house. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids are talking to other families. And so sometimes it's just very organic. And And you just don't need to deal with it. Yeah, you don't need to deal. So do do you recommend, and I know this is general education, but is there any time where you're like, you should probably definitely go and get a parenting plan or a consent order if you're dealing with a specific type of ex? So if you're, at the moment, if there's an agreement about the children and you're amicable, Mm -hmm. I think then I'd, I'd do a parenting plan or even consent orders and lock them in if you're happy with the plan. Yeah. Uh, Because sometimes amicable can change Mm. and then they'll say, no, I don't want that, I want this. And really nothing's changed in your circumstances usually. It's just their their mindset has changed. Mm. And so sometimes it's good to nail down a consent order or at least a parenting plan in the early days when everyone's friendly and before they start positioning themselves. And Mm. I'm sad to say this, but sometimes an arrangement where they see the kids every second weekend and on a Wednesday, Thursday night or whatever seems quite okay until magically they get a child support assessment mm. or, or uh, they realise property, if if you've got the children more than they have, it's going to give you more property. Uh, and then suddenly it's not really for the best interest of the children. Sometimes the motive is financial. And that's not just not me saying that. Mm. That's come up um, in the uh, Law Reform Committee. People have put submissions in Mm -hmm. and there have been studies done and it does show an alarming number of people whose real motivation is not the best interests of the children, whose real motivation is financial. And so I'd be locking it in nice and early before, kind of before they know what before they figure before that they out. Get that, yeah, if that's the right thing for the kids. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you can do that parenting plan, consent orders, and that's it, or court. Mm. No, or of nothing. course, mediation or nothing. Yeah. Okay. What about the actual divorce? This is the last one. Ah, so yes. this is the so for de facto people, you don't have to worry about this, I guess. Mind you, you did tell me recently there is official de facto paperwork. There is which registering is, a, an agreement. Hardly anyone does it. But when it comes to divorce, mm-hmm. can you avoid court? No, you can't. You don't have to go though if you haven't got any kids. But when you remember your wedding, I mean, we all remember the clothes we wore and who got drunk and what Uncle Harry said. Mm. Um, but actually, you might forget that even if you got married in a church, and now eighty percent of people get married by celebrant. I didn't know that. Wow, eighty percent. Wow. Whereas 80%. it used to be just a couple percent. Like if it wasn't a church, everyone tut tutted when I was young. But anyway, <laughs> um, but. At that point, it's, you will know or you will remember if you think about it that someone started filling in documents for the Commonwealth Government to register your marriage, mm. okay, and that was, and you had to have two witnesses mm-hmm. and, and it was only after that that you could be pronounced married. Now, just like the court or just like the Commonwealth Government has power over marriages, they also have the only power, only the court, in the Commonwealth Court, can end that marriage. So if you do anything else except file a divorce and get it finalised and then remarry, you're committing bigamy, which is an offence. Really? Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, obviously. You go to jail for it. You can go to jail Mm. if you don't get divorced and get married again. Yeah. I'm a mum. Yeah. But but the... Marriage celebrants, uh, they want your divorce documents before oh, they okay. would have to get married okay. again. So, yes, so oh. it, they're the only way you can break end a marriage is by the Commonwealth Court. Okay. So there's a document that you fill in to apply for yes. it. You can do it joint or, or, or indep- independent of the other person. 
Sometimes if people are uh, doing one of those conscious uncouplings and we're all friends, you might want to put it in together. Mm. Uh, But however, if there are children involved, I think it's better if one person puts it in and maintains this is what's happening. The other person then can object if they like or put a response and turn up. But the only grounds for divorce in Australia are 12 months separation. So, and that's 12 months separation plus no reasonable likelihood of getting back together again. What? Yes. So how do you prove that? Well, the way you prove it is that only one of you has to form the view there's no reasonable likelihood. Oh, okay. So you just go, hell no, Your <laughs> Honour. So yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen anyone in court oh, go, actually, we've changed our minds? Uh some people do. Uh, that's because oh, so it, that's because when you go to court and the court gives you a divorce, or if you file the documents because you haven't got kids, and the court says the divorce um, is granted, it doesn't become final for about four weeks. Right. And the reason it doesn't is that when the the court was being formed and to make powers about divorce. The, the churches back in the 70s were very upset about a no-fault divorce, mm. right, because prior to that, under the Mar- Matrimonial Act in 1939, you had to prove desertion, cruelty, mm. something like that, or infidelity. Um, but now the, the new Act said, no, you don't have to have anybody who's to blame. We're just going to divorce. We're just going to grant it if they've been separated for 12 months and no reasonable likelihood of getting together. So the response if someone files a response, you file your divorce application, right, and you say this is the date we separated, if someone else argues that that's the date, and, I mean, it gets murky when you're living under one roof, Mm. uh, then the court will hear that argument. and and as But as long as that date is 12 months before you file for divorce, even even the second date, they'll grant the divorce. Now, the other thing I have seen a lot of is people – who don't want to get divorced and they come to court and they want to say to the judge, this is wrong and this is wrong, I don't agree with this of the kids and the judge registrar really will say usually, yes, but do you oppose getting divorced? Is there anything else you want to say? No, I just, I don't like the way this is said. And Yes, well, do you agree? Oh, I think we'll get back together again and the judge or registrar will go, and do you feel that way, ma'am or sir? No, no way. Okay, well, it only takes one of you to form that view. Right. And as for your question about that month where you're waiting for it Mm. to become final, Mm. some people do reconcile in Mm. that time. The church wanted them to have time to think about what they'd done. (laughs) Go to your room. (laughs) Think about what you've done. Yeah. Because it's quite shocking, particularly if you – no one, I don't think – I suppose some people do. Most people don't walk down the aisle thinking, no. oh, well, if this gets too rough, I'll just divorce him. Yeah. You know, you don't. You want that fairy tale life that, of where you, and you've probably seen your parents or your parents' friends where they've got 30, 40 year marriages. You mm. want that. Mm. Um, then when it becomes kind of unstuck, mm. you know, uh, then you go to, go to the court if you have to go to court and appear if there are children you do have to and the court looks to see if the arrangements for the kids are okay because sometimes that's the only time they ever get to have any input about the kids right so you're put in that so that's why you have to go that's why you have to go if you've got kids to make sure all the kids are being cared for by somebody and uh, that's right and the registrar will say and i i they usually have to make a finding that suitable arrangements are being made for the children. Right. So that's why your divorce application wants to know who's supervising and what school, what's their health, who do they live with, how often do they see the other person. Right. So there's a big application that you have to fill in. Mm. You then go in, uh, you have to go to court if mm-hmm. you've got kids because they want to make sure that the kids are being cared for, even if the other person opposes, as long as you've waited that one months, year from, from and you separation. Don't think getting back together again. Yeah. If you are separated under one roof, we've got an episode where we talk about oh. how to make sure that you don't have this trouble where they say, oh, no, we've been together the whole time living under, we're in the same house. So there's a whole episode on that. But, but mum, when you're actually going into court to mm. do that, how long does it take? Uh, what, the actual hearing or yeah. how long to get yeah. to, It's usually only a couple of minutes. Okay. But, but over the years, I I do see no matter how much you don't 
like your ex-partner, mm. no matter how much you desperately wanted to be separated from. It's like a, a kick in the stomach afterwards and I often have to prescribe tea and pavlova. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I guess if it only takes a couple of minutes. It's very But quick. your wedding took, I don't know, all oh, day. And months of planning. And months of planning. It's a very big end to a, a very quick end to a very long beginning, it's, I it's guess. It's weird. Yeah. And yes. I do remember, and I've probably told this story before, but I remember that uh Judge Lyndon Meyer sent out a, a memo to the court, uh, to the all practitioners to ensure that their clients dressed appropriately for the divorce. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, no. Yes, what? because, well, someone went in tennis clothes. Oh. And they were ready to just, the minute it was over, they were off. Oh, and, and the court really got upset about people not playing appropriate. Yes. Yeah. And uh, actually, I do remember some judge, I don't think it was Ms. Judge Lyndon Meyer, who issued uh, like a statement mm. aimed at the women practitioners mm. and say, lawyers that is, and saying that, you know, female practitioners are required to be appropriately dressed for court. Um, it's a day It's a day in a Commonwealth court, not a day at the races. Oh, gosh. <laughs> because okay. there were, yeah, now the young people, the women dress beautifully, mm. you know, but in those days we all were looking like men with our white shirts, black, you know, black jackets mm. trying to... Be look appropriate. Be, and, yeah. Wow. So things have changed, but really you can't avoid that going to court. How long does it take to get your actual official divorce documents after that day? Well, do you know, I think it's only about six weeks, the longest you would wait after that day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can shorten the the time for it to become final, but it, that's a really complex application and you better go and see a lawyer. Why would you want to shorten the amount of time? What, like if you're in a big hurry to get married again? Uh -huh. Well, oh, I, I oh had a gosh. case years and years and years ago from another practitioner and I'll change some of the details, but suffice to say that the practitioner had tried three times to get the divorce through and he always had something wrong with his documents and they kept rejecting it and uh, he didn't tell his client. <gasps> and then sent it to me to sort out. And I was only young. And uh, they had a wedding booked in another capital city with 180 guests, <gasps> and it was for that Saturday. <gasps> I know. I did not sleep that night. And I go into court <laughs> in front of the registrar, and I actually in those days used to take my books, the family yeah. law books yeah. and things, and I had stickers and oh, submissions and everything. And he looked at me, <laughs> he looked at my book, uh, all my paperwork spread out and the stickers, and he goes, Mrs. Galvin, are you going to ask for an abridgment of time? And I said, yes, yes, <laughs> Register, I was, I am. And he says, granted. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to fight He you. didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> well, he had a busy list, but yes, so, so yeah. Okay. So That's look, more than you ever wanted to know about no, a divorce Way too much. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what you're saying is you can't avoid court for that, but it's not like you need a barrister and a lawyer. You can do that yourself. Mm, you our can. course takes you absolutely step by step. You don't okay. even need to get eyes on it. Right. So, so realistically, the only thing that you have to go to court for, technically, if you can get away with all the other consent orders, parenting plans and everything, is you ha or arbitration, you have to just go to court for the official divorce only if you have kids. That's right. And it's for a couple of seconds where they well, get you to stand up and say, I declare or whatever that you are now officially divorced. That's right. It, there's not much to it. We give you a um, a script yeah. and you'll be there with probably 15, 20 other people. Other people getting divorced. Yes, and it's very unlikely that your ex will turn up. I did see people there that were getting divorced that sat together. I know. Held hands and stuff. It was yes. weird. But, look, everybody's different. Your your journey's different. But I just thought it was really important that we did an episode that just outlaid to people, you don't have to go to court. No. There are other of options. There's other avenues. And, of course, you know, as Mum has said a million times before, 2% yep. usually end up in a trial in court. That's right. Everybody else gets out Settles eventually. It, works it out. With consent makes orders. Makes compromises. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. As long, I think the key thing to know is, you don't have to get a divorce, get a divorce, mm. but you do need to probably, I think you do need to, in almost all circumstances, draw a line under your financial arrangements. Yes, and the way to do that is to get a divorce. No. Oh, well, yes, I guess you can wait a year <laughs> after divorce, but the 
another way is to do your consent orders or do a financial mm. agreement. Even mm. a really easy peasy consent order, we each keep what we've got signed yeah. here. And it's done. Yeah. Yeah. But always go and see a lawyer, get own your own independent legal advice because every situation is different. Yes. Mm. Uh, this is only an educational uh, podcast. And mum, thank you for explaining to us the different ways of settling out of court. Thank you, Laura. Bye, Thanks, everyone. everyone. See you next time. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lim would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.